One of the OpenStack Foundation keynotes at this year's summit was Beyond Data Center Cloud and looked at and considered the future direction of the community. Ildiko, before we get on to the future direction, where are we now? What's the, the status of, of OpenStack and what has been achieved in, in quite a, a relatively short space of time? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, OpenStack is basically as opposed to being just the open source cloud platform, we are transitioning towards open infrastructure, and that's what we are embracing here on this conference as well. Uh, I think you could see that from the keynotes also, like we are not just talking about the cloud platform, but we are also having containers, CI, CD, and uh, a big chunk of telecom NFE and edge computing on our, uh, on our schedule. So this is what we are looking into today. Is this because the, the market itself has changed and evolved that you're doing this? Um, there are multiple aspects to it. One is, of course, the market. So like, uh, for example, in the telecom area, obviously 5G is what's in the focus today. And this is what we also need to focus within the community as well when it comes to more of the telecom NFE networking features and functionalities. So uh, I just uh, had a short keynote um, block on edge computing, on the edge computing track. And we had one presentation about a network slicing, for example, just, you know, how you address those requirements that 5G brings in. So I'm not just, you know, go deep details into edge, but really just look into the network, the wire, what happens there. Well, it leads me on to my next question, which is, are the requirements of telcos very different to other enterprise sectors? And how are the telcos contributions shaping the, the overall OpenStack picture? I think I think the um, the know how much those requirements are different. That's also shifting a little. Like um, again, 5G brings in edge computing a little, and when we talk about edge computing, then you talk about IoT, you talk about manufacturing, you talk about uh, retail, and when you look into all those use cases, it turns out that while the telecom segment of the industry has its own unique re requirements they are very similar to uh, many of the requirements of those other segments as well. And I think this is why it's so great that our community is so diverse. Uh, we have representatives from all over the industry, therefore we can, you know, in, in, in this open environment, just discuss all these things together and basically point out that, oh wow, I need that too, so let's work on that together. So I think we are rather benefiting from each other's, you know, needs and experience uh, as opposed to, you know, conflicting. We are also, as in the past, we are still not planning to specialize OpenStack for telecom or for retail. So we are really targeting the industry, developing the components that you can pick up, see how you can fit it into your architecture. If you need some changes or enhancements to it, come to the community. We will address them together. And basically, this is our philosophy that we are building open infrastructure together. Now, one of the most talked about parts of the network at the moment is, is the edge, um, even though it means different things to different people, and it's a bit hard to pin down exactly what we're talking about here, far edge, near edge. Um, <laughs> it would appear that OpenStack has a central role to play, an important role to play in the edge. H how, are you, how are you seeing this all going to play out? I think it also has like multiple angles to it. Like when I say open infrastructure and we talk about edge, so we talk about like a big operator network, uh, you know, hundreds, thousands of edge sites. And uh, there's one operator network that we are leveraging, but there might be, you know, applications from, you know, different providers on that particular network. So when it comes to, you know, all the magic words as interoperability that we, especially in the telecom, uh, environment that always gets an emphasis in case of edge that's even more critical that how these applications will fit into the system how the different components that i would assume still different vendors will bring in how they will all work together so uh, something like openstack has a really big role when it comes to you know how to handle the infrastructure uh, how to um, manage uh, the different hardware requirements so really to provide that that smooth uh, layer on on top of the hardware in a way that also provides interoperability and 
we are having the, the de facto REST APIs, you know from the community work that what's out there, what to comply to, we are always also trying to keep in sync with the standardization bodies. Um, so this is how we are trying to uh, help the industry to innovate in a way that will fit into their business models. I mean, you, you talked about um, staying in touch with the standards bodies who, who, who are looking at um, EDGE. In a short space of time, there's a number of projects and, and initiatives looking at EDGE. How do we ensure that we're all collaborating as best we can and not replicating or duplicating work or going down blind alleys? Yeah, th that one is really hard. Uh, I just heard, I think, last week that there are like 22 groups and organizations in the open source and standardization ecosystem who are trying to figure out what this whole edge thing is. So what we are doing is that we are basically leveraging our experience with uh, collaborating with different communities. I think uh, we talked about it earlier, how OpenStack and OPNFE collaborates, for example. I think that was very, very fruitful for both communities, like OpenStack back in the day a few years ago I learned a lot about what you know what telecom and NFE is what those requirements mean why those people want those features that they want because back in the day again the enterprise data center people like okay I don't understand those acronyms I, I just don't know what's going on so we learned all those lessons and uh, we are using these models so for example there is an edge computing uh, project I think it's called OPNFE Edge Cloud uh, project right now so we are working together with them we are looking into you know how OpenStack components will be tested in, a, in an edge environment in a full stack uh, environment they are looking into things like uh, one of our new projects called Cyborg which is for hardware acceleration is providing a framework so for edge like GPUs, FPGAs, uh, and other you know specialized hardware is is pretty much in the picture. So um, for example, that group is looking into how they can fit that into the system. We will work together how to test all these things in in the OPNFE Faros labs. Uh, beyond that, we are also uh, working together with with ONAP, and uh, there is this new uh, edge project Acrino. Um, they are also represented in this summit as well. There's a birds of a feather session tomorrow. Um, so we are. Uh, trying to find our ways with, with uh, adjacent communities to work together and um, we're also having great relationship with, with CNCF on the container side just to make sure that OpenStack and Kubernetes as it's supposed to they are integrating smoothly together now we are in the uh, CI CD system you can I, um, I guess you saw the, the diagram with the cloud providers and now we have OpenStack on it, tested together with, with the Kubernetes um, components. So um, I think we will just really follow the path uh, that we built up during the past, I don't know, two, three years uh, and leverage the experience. And with, with so many technologies and projects, um, for those telcos who are looking to engage with this with this community, it can be like an all-you-can-eat buffet in a way. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's a quite a daunting prospect. What, what, what's your advice for, for those maybe not quite participating yet or want to participate and, 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 and get into this, this community? Um, so if they are looking into OpenStack and the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, let's talk about this uh, group of projects now. So um, we started off with, with OpenStack as a project with, with several sub-projects under it, and it grew big. So I think currently we have like 50, 60 something projects under OpenStack, which is you know data center, cloud, private, public, hybrid, as you want to use it. Um, and we realized that it is really hard for someone who's like a newcomer and just looking into, okay, I just want, you know, cloud functionality. I want to be able to manage the infrastructure, figure out what to do. And all of a sudden there are like 60 projects in my face, what to do. So um, with OpenStack itself, what we are working on, again, in the past one, two years, is to make OpenStack itself as modular as possible, uh, really stepping far, far away from the early perceptions of that's just a big monolith. So you should be able to pick up those projects that you need, like Keystone for identity, Glance for image management, Nova for compute, 
and so forth. Um, and beyond that, the, under the foundation umbrella, we are having focus areas like new projects popping up like Kata containers, uh, for example, or now we have Zool for CI, CD, and we're also having an edge computing group uh, formalizing under the foundation umbrella. Uh, it, it's also getting new projects under it like Airship and Starting X. So we are getting code uh, into that area as well. So. The purpose of these focus areas is that with OpenStack we realized uh, that there are some well-defined ways of how users and operators are using OpenStack. So basically when we talk about CI, CD and containers and edge, um, that's basically with OpenStack in the middle and, and those are the areas which are specific enough so we can have an activity around. So, you know, those companies who are looking into edge more specifically, then the edge computing group is where uh, they can engage. And within that group, we are still like picking up projects from, from OpenStack because um, we are strong believers in reusing what we have as opposed to develop everything from scratch. So these focus areas should really help people to, to know where to start their engagement. And then, you know, they might still end up looking at the Keystone code because that's what they need for, for their environment. But with the focus areas, they will know where to start. Thank you very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you.